Okay, so we will now learn about cells. So, all organisms are made of cells. Cells are very small, so large organisms contains millions of cells. Some organisms are unicellular, which means that they are made of just a single cell. Bacteria and yeasts are example of single celled organisms. So basically think of a building. If you put together a large number of bricks in a specific order, you get a specific shape of a building. So think of cells as the bricks and the organism like human beings as the building. If you um, organize the cells together in a specific manner, you get um, a full living organism. So Basically cells are very small, they are microscopic in size and usually larger organisms so they are, uh, larger organisms contains large number of cells so they are called multicellular but there are some organisms like bacteria and yeasts they are unicellular that is they contain of only just a single cell all of their function is performed in that single cell and they are termed unicellular so microscopes to see cells clearly you need to use a microscope uh, like in figure 2.2 this kind of microscope used in a school laboratory is called a light microscope because it shines light through the piece of animal or plant you are looking at it uses glass lenses to magnify and focus the image a very good light microscope can magnify uh, about 1500 times so all the structures in figure 2.3 and 2.4 can be seen Okay, so in a light microscope, you place the specimen on the tray and you look through the lens and focus the image of the cell. And so the light, using the light microscope, you cannot see all of the organelles in details, but you do can see all of the, um, the overall structure of the cell. And usually a light microscope shines light through the specimen. Okay. So photomicrographs of plant and animal cells are shown in figure 2.5 and 2.6. A photomicrograph is a picture made using a light microscope. To see even smaller things inside a cell, an electron microscope is used. This uses a beam of electrons instead of light and can magnify up to 500,000 times. This means that a lot of more detail can be seen inside a cell. We can see many structures more clearly and also some structures that could not be seen at all with a light microscope. So usually a electron, an electron microscope is basically more expensive than the light microscope so you may not have it in your school laboratory but an electron microscope looks something like this one in figure 2.2 and um, it, it, it needs to be connected to an electric power. So Electron microscope using an electron microscope you cannot see the overall shape of the cell but you can see the structures of the organelles in details and so the electron microscope do not shine light through the specimen instead it um, shines beams of electron okay so there are basically two types of cells plant cells and animal cells figure 2.3 is the typical uh, photomicrograph of a typical animal cell while figure 2.4 is a photomicrograph of a typical plant cell now in the photomicrographs you can see there are small structures and each structures have different names the structures with are called organelles so what are organelles Organelles are specialized structures within the cell, that is they perform a specific task. We need to know um, uh, the um, function of few of the organelles, but before that let me tell you the differences between plant cells and animal cells. Now in table 2.1 we can see the major differences. Plant cells have a cellular cell wall outside the cell membrane, while animal cells have no cell wall. Plant cells often have chloroplasts containing chlorophyll. Animal cells have no chloroplasts. Plant cells often uh, have large vacuoles containing cell sap, while animal cells have only small vacuoles. Plant cells often have starch grains. Animal cells never have starch grains. Sometimes have glycogen granules. Plant cells are, are often regular in shape, while animal cells are often irregular in shape. 
um, they have um, few differences but they also have few similarities now let's see what are the similarities both plant cells and animal cells have cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus okay so these are the um, basic comparison between plant cells and animal cells so while studying these uh, differences you, you come up across some unknown terms like yeah, you may do, may not know what is chloroplast um, starch grains glycogens but as we go through our course we will learn each of the terms um, in a more elaborate way okay okay so organelles now what are organelles organelles are specialized structure in living cells that is they are specialized in performing a single task only so there are a lot of uh, a lot of different kinds of organelles you have already known some in the differences in plants and animal cells so you don't have to learn all for your o levels you just have to learn cell membrane cell wall cytoplasm vacuoles chloroplasts nucleus mitochondria and ribosomes okay so let's start with cell membrane Whatever sort of animal or plant they come from, from, all cells have a cell membrane, sometimes called the cell surface membrane, around the outside. Inside the cell membrane is a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm in which are found many small structures called organelles. The most obvious of these organelles is usually the nucleus. In a plant cell it is very difficult to see because it is right against the cell wall. The cell membrane is a very thin layer of protein and fat. It is very important to the cell because it controls what goes in and what goes out. It is said to be partially permeable which means that it will let some substances through but not the others. Okay, so um, as you can see from the picture in 2.3 and 2.4 there is a structure called cell membrane. Okay, so it's the outermost part of a of an animal cell but plant cells have cell wall so for um, plant cell it is the second outermost part of the plant so cell membrane is basically a layer of protein and fats and so it is a layer of lipoproteins and um, it is very important because um, the cell membrane actually allows some substances to get in and some substances to get out usually the substances from the um, environment of the cell which is needed for the uh, maintaining its function is um, can enter the cell or and the waste products can only go um, leave the cell but no waste products or um, toxic materials cannot um, enter the cell so since it is permeable to only few selective substances it is called partially permeable Okay, so and also we have uh, seen here that inside the cell membrane is a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. In cytoplasm is the um, part of a cell where all of the organelles are present. Okay, so then is the cell wall. All plants are surrounded by cell wall made mainly of cellulose. Paper which is made from cell walls is also made of cellulose. Animal cells never have cell walls made of cellulose. Cellulose belongs to a group of substances called polysaccharides, which are described in chapter 4. Cellulose forms fibers which crisscross over one another to form a very strong covering to the cell. This helps to protect and support the cell. If the cell absorbs a lot of water and so the cell wall stops it bursting. Because of the spaces between the fibers, even very large molecules are able to go through the cellular cell wall. It is therefore said to be fully permeable. Now only plant cells have cell wall. No animal cells have cell wall. So cell wall is mainly surrounded. Uh, cell wall is uh, mainly made of a substance called cellulose. Now about cellulose, you will learn great detail about the structure and chemical composition of cellulose in your A levels. So, but uh, for your O levels, just notice that cellulose belongs to a group of substances called polysaccharides. Okay, so um, elaboration of um, polysaccharides will be described elaborately in chapter four, but Basically, saccharides means sugars, and since it is polysaccharides, means it is a combination of uh, more than two um, sugars. If it is one sugar, then it is called monosaccharide. 
If there are two sugars, then they are called disaccharides. If there are more than uh, two sugars, then they are called polysaccharides. Okay, so from figure 2.7, you can see that the um, cellulose fiber forms crisscross over one another. Um, this increases the overall strength of the cell wall. Why this is important? Now, there's another term which will be new to you. This is called homeostasis, but you will learn in um, later chapters. Okay, so basically animals, they can control their water potential of the cell. So, you know, if um, a large amount of water enters the cell, the cell wall swells, I mean the cell swells and it bursts. But since plant cells do not have the homeostatic mechanisms, they can control the amount of water that can enter the cell or leave the cell. So if the, say the plant cell have absorbed um, larger amount of water, it's gonna burst. But uh, thanks to cellular cell wall, um, it, it, it is very strong and so it protects and supports the cell. If the cell do get, um, um, so, uh, absorb a lot of water and swells, a target pressure is built up because since the cellulas is very strong, the um, water will try to, um, uh, what shall I say, try to make the cell swell. And so uh, pressure will be built up in the cell. You, you've learned in your physics, right? So the pressure inside the plant cell, which is caused by the water molecules bouncing off the um, plant cell wall is called target pressure. And so the cell wall on the cell, plant cell do not burst. And it is fully pyrenoid. It means it uh, any molecules, either it's necessary or maybe it is a waste, can pass through the in and out of the cell. So that's why it is said to be fully permeable. Now cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a clear jelly. It is uh, cytoplasm is a clear jelly. It is nearly all water. About seventy percent is water, and main, in many cells, it contains many substances dissolved in it, especially proteins. Many different metabolic reactions um, take place in the cytoplasm. Okay, so basically all of the reactions of the cells takes place in the cytoplasm. So what is the meaning of metabolic reaction? First of all, we need to know two terms that are catabolism and anabolism. Basically, anabolism is the process by which um, two smaller molecules react together to form a larger molecules inside the cell. I mean the biological reaction. And catabolism is the opposite of it. Like um, larger, uh, a larger molecule is reacted in a way so that two smaller molecules are built up. Okay, so both the uh, in our cells, both catabolism and anabolism takes place spontaneously. And so, I'm sorry, not spontaneously, but um, it takes place uh, together at a time. And so, both the catabolism and anabolism are together called metabolism. So here it's, it's written, metabolism are the chemical reactions of life. Okay. So vacuoles. A vacuole is a space in a cell surrounded by a membrane and containing a solution. Plant cells have very large vacuoles which contain a solu solution of sugars and other substances called cell cell. A full vacuole presses outward on the rest of the cell and helps to keep it in shape. Animal cells have much smaller membrane bond spaces called vesicles which may contain food or water. So there is actually nothing uh, much to explain here. And then chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are never found in animal cells, but most of the cells in the green parts of the plant have them. They contain the green coloring or pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll absorbs energy from sunlight and this energy is used for making food for plant by photosynthesis. So, chloroplasts often contain starch grains which have been made by photosynthesis. Animal cells never contain starch grains. Some animal cells, however, do have granules of another substance similar to starch called glycogen these granules are found in the cytoplasm not inside the chloroplast okay so here chloroplast basically the function of chloroplast is to absorb energy from sunlight and it is then used in photosynthesis to make food for the plants because the um, plants cannot get its own food by um, hunting other organisms they need to make their own food 
so detail about photosynthesis will be I, I will talk I will teach you in chapter 6 and there and chloroplasts contain the chemicals pigments chlorophyll which absorbs the energy from the sunlight now detail about the photosynthesis I mean how does the chemicals of the chlorophylls absorb the uh, energy from the sunlight and how is this energy later used for photosynthesis you will learn it in your A2 if you take biology in your A levels okay and starch grain and plants uh, stored starch grain but animals stored um, glycogen and the structure of starch and glycogen you will learn it deeply in your A levels but for now this much information is enough for you in your O levels then nucleus the nucleus is where the genetic information is stored this helps this helps the cell to make the right sorts of protein the information is kept on the chromosomes which are inherited from the organism's parents the chromosomes are made of dna chromosomes are very long but so thin that they cannot easily be seen even using the electron microscope however when the cell is dividing they become short and thick and can be seen with a good light microscope okay so nucleus is basically what the genetic information of the cell is stored so what is the genetic information means um, basically genetic information means how um, your cells are going to work or how you, your eye color will be this is uh, basically the genetic information we inherit this from our parents 50% comes from our um, um, mother and 50% comes from our father you will learn deeply about this uh, this in chapter in chapter inheritance chapter 18 I'll explain you deeply about this stuff now just think about that just understand this that the information of how the cell is going to work is kept on the in the chromosomes the chromosomes are in the nucleus okay and the chromosomes are made up of DNA this is you need to know and another thing you need to know is that DNA is made up of genes okay so chromosomes are very long but they are very thin so when the cell divides they sh shorten and become thick and so they can be seen using a light microscope now you will also learn this in the later chapters and you will learn about the how um, the chromosomes help to make the characteristic of the um, uh, cells and how the chromosomes are used to make protein deeply in your A levels but for all for O levels this much information is enough for you okay so after the nucleus you will now learn about the mitochondria photomicrographs of cells taken using an electron microscope is called electromicrographs show tiny structures that are almost invisible with a light microscope they are called mitochondria mitochondria are found in almost all cells except those of prokaryotes now figure 2.8 and 2.9 show the electron microscopes uh, electron uh, micrographs of uh, mitochondria mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell Inside them, oxygen is used to release energy from glucose in the process called aerobic respiration. You'll find out more about aerobic respiration in chapter 11. Not surprisingly, cells that use a lot of energy have a lot of mitochondria. Muscle cells, for example, are tightly packed with mitochondria. Sperm cells, which need energy to swim to the egg, and neurons, nerve cells, which need energy to transport, mm, sorry, to transmit impulse cells, also have large number of mitochondria. The black spots on the electron micrograph in figure 2.8 are granules of carbohydrate called glycogen. This is similar to starch. Starch is never found in animal cells. They store glycogen instead. Glycogen is a reserve fuel. When required, it can be broken down to glucose to be used as a fuel by the mitochondria in the liver cell or transported in the blood to other cells that need it. Okay, so all of our cells need energy to perform the task it needs and usually the cells like our muscle cells which use a lot of energy and the sperm cells they need to swim 
to their um, ovum okay you learn about this deeply um, in a later chapter and also the neurons which need to transmit um, impulses need a lot of energy so they have a lot of mitochondria in their cells and glycogen yeah, and um, the how is energy released in mitochondria is a process called aerobic respiration now there are also other type of respiration called anaerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration there are two types of anaerobic respiration okay but you need to learn elaborately about respiration so it will i will teach you it in your um, respiration chapter but if you want to know deeply about respiration you um, it will be in your a levels okay so now ribosomes even thinner structure than mitochondria can just be seen with an electron microscope they are called ribosomes they look like tiny dots attached to a network of membrane that runs throughout the cytoplasm this network is called the rough endoplasmic network rough, rough, rough endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes may also just be scattered freely in the cytoplasm ribosomes are found in all types of cells bacteria uh, protoctists fungi animals and plants all have ribosomes in their cells Although they are so thin that they can be um, scarcely see them uh, even with an electron microscope. Ribosomes have very important function in the cell. They are places where proteins are made by joining amino acids together in a long chain. This is done according to the instruction carried on the DNA in the cell's nucleus which specify um, the sequence of amino acids that should be strung together to make a particular protein. You can read more about this in chapter 4. And um, we know that uh, proteins are made up of sequences of amino acids. So, how are these amino acids converted into protein in our cells? The organelle, the organelle which perform these tasks, is called ribosomes. Now, how do the ribosomes attach the um, uh, amino acids to make the protein? You will learn it in details in your A levels. But you will also learn it elaborately in your O levels, but in detail you learn it in your A levels. But now there is a question. How do the ribosomes know what sequence of amino acids to, um, uh, to join together to make the particular protein? The, in the, that information is stored in the nucleus. Okay. Okay, cells and organisms. A large organism such as yourself may contain many millions of cells but not all the cells are alike. Most, almost all of them can carry out the activities which are characteristic of living things, but many of them specialize in doing some of these better than other cells do. Muscle cells, for example, are specially adapted for movement. Most cells in the leaf of a plant are specially adapted for making food by photosynthesis. Table 2.2 lists examples of specialized cell and parts of the book where you will find information about how their structures help them to carry out their function okay so basically um, usually all of the cells can perform the uh, amount of uh, the same activities as the other but some cells specialized in some activities which the other cells cannot do that much efficiently okay for example ciliated cell it is found in the lining, the trachea and bronchi. It is specialized in moving mucus upward. No other cells except cilia, ciliated cell can do it better than itself. Um, actually, no other cell does it. So root hair cells, which are found near the ends of the plant root, absorb water and mineral salts. Xylem vessels in stem, roots and leaves of plants transport water and mineral salts help in support palisade mesophyll cells beneath the epidermis of a leaf specializes in photosynthesis nerve cells throughout the bodies of animals transmit information in the form of electrical impulses red blood cell in the blood of mammals transport oxygen sperm and egg cells in testes and ovaries are specialized in fusing together to produce a zygote now all of the types of cell which I have mentioned and it is written in the um, table are actually needed for your O levels course. Now I will not uh, teach you this right now but as I go through all of the chapters and when I will finish the syllabus you will eventually know all of this. 
and in great details okay so now what we have learned we have learned that um, all of the all of our living organisms is made up of cells but there are many types of cells and some cells specialize in one task okay so now tissues often cells who specialize in the same activity are found together a group of cells like this is called the tissue an example of a tissue is a layer of cells lining your stomach these cells make enzymes to help you digest your food the stomach also contains other tissues for example there is a layer of muscle in the stomach wall made of cells which can move this muscle tissue makes the wall of the stomach move in and out churning the food and mixing it up with the enzymes plants also have tissues you may already have looked at some epidermis tissues from an onion bulb inside a leaf a layer of cells makes up the palisade tissues in which the cells are specialized to carry out photosynthesis usually specialized cells are found in groups and so think about it say um, for example okay um, think about um, ciliated cells or any of a specialized cell okay so this is a cell mm -hmm. and um, so it performs a specific function now usually these um, types of specialized cells are found together in a pack okay so um, this is actually not the current diagram but this is just so that um, I can make you understand okay so these are cells okay special cell all of them are the same type of cell performing the same function and this bunch of cells together is called a tissue okay so usually specialized cells are found in groups and this group of specialized cells are called is called a tissue okay now then organ all tissues in stomach work together um, each has its own job to do a group of tissues like, like this makes an organ the stomach is an organ other organs include the heart the kidney and the lungs in a plant uh, an onion bulb is an organ a leaf is another example of a plant organ okay so um, what did it say okay so now that we have learned what is a tissue just clean this up So now we have learned that a group of specialized cells makes up a tissue performing a specific task. Now suppose, um, say for example, um, these are groups of, this is a tissue which is a group of specialized cells. This performs a specific task and this is another type of tissue. This also um, performs a specific task. And say for example, this is just to make you understand, okay? And say for example, this is another um, group of tissues. They perform a specific task. So, um, say this is tissue number one. This is, say for example, tissue number two. And this is tissue number three. Each tissue has um, specialized function and their, their functions are not alike. So, um, these tissues all together make up an organ now there are different kinds of organ like the stomach is an organ and the lungs is an organ which are composed of different types of tissues now you will come across these different types of um, um, different types of organ in as we go through the chapter okay but for now just understand this that this is a, uh, say, uh, to make you understand, this is also cell number, cell type 1, cell type 2, and cell type 3. So, cells are specialized. 
A group of specialized cell makes a tissue. A group of um, different types of specialized tissues makes up an organ. Okay, so for now, you just understand this simple diagram. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> then, we cover, then we will understand what is an organ system. The stomach is the only one of the organ which help in the digestion of food. So for this, uh, so for example, this is uh, uh, stomach and uh, stomach con consists of different tissues and um, different tissues perform different activities but altogether the overall result is that it digests proteins. Okay. Okay. Now the stomach is the only one of the organ which help in the digestion of food, the mouth, the intestine and the stomach are all part of the digestive system. The heart is part of the circulatory system while each kidney is part of the excretory system. The way in which organisms are built up can be summarized like this. Cells make up tissues which make up organs, which make up organ system, which make up an organism. Okay, for example, the ciliated cell um, in figure 2.14 make up a tissue, this is part of an organ, the bron bronchus, which is part of the respiratory system, which is part of the organism or person. Okay, so basically um, a group of organs makes up an organ system. Okay, and a group of organ system makes up an organism. Now, it is better understandable if I give you an example, like um, if I um, like if I give an example of the digestive system, it will be even more clear. But um, as you go through the chapter, there uh, there is a chapter um, animal nutrition. There we have to understand the digestive system in great details and also uh, respiratory system, reproductive system, and there are also other types of system which will come across. And um, so, like a group of organ system makes an organism. So, what could be the organ uh, systems? As I, I already explained, excretory system and the respiratory system, digestive system. Okay, so for now, just get the basic idea that cells are specialized in their work. A group of specialized cell is called a tissue. A group of specialized tissue is called an organ. The tissues uh, perform different tasks. A, um, a group of organ makes up an organ system. Each organ performs a different specialized ta task. A group of organ system makes an organism. Okay, and the organ systems also are um, specialized in performing different tasks.